We're here in the Great E34 Wilderness. We found a new species, a species new to America, never before seen. We're not interested in these 525s, these are locals. What we're interested in is this purple specimen back there. All the way from Christchurch, New Zealand, I am excited to present to you guys my very first E34 M5. As you guys know, I have been an E34 lover for many years now. My E34 525 Calypso was my second ever BMW, my first ever old BMW. E34s hold a huge special place in my heart. And the million dollar question I've been getting for all these years, where is the M5? Why no M5? Do you not like the M5? And every time I'd have to play it off as if, uh, I don't really care to own an M5. The truth was, I had the dream M M5 in my head. And it had to be that M5. I didn't want a black one, I didn't want a white one, I didn't want a silver one. I wanted a Daytona Violet M5. And I have finally found what I think is probably one of the most unique spec M5s ever. I, you guys already heard, I import it from New Zealand. You may be thinking why. There's a few reasons, but this is a special car. Not only is this a Daytona Violet M5, this is an M Anthracite Hurricane Interior M5. And as you're probably noticing, no, the camera's not reflected right now. This is a right-hand drive M5. This car has not only one of, in my opinion, the most beautiful and best paint codes on any E34, but also probably one of the coolest interiors and just to top off the uniqueness, right-hand drive. And we haven't even gotten into the engine yet. You could probably guess what I'm gonna say the engine is. If you guessed the S38 B38, you would be right. This is probably the Holy Grail M5. Daytona Violet, S38 B38, M Hurricane Interior. Right hand drive doesn't necessarily make it a pro or a con in that world, but for me, I really like the uniqueness. So I am just, I mean, this car, you guys are probably wondering like, what is with this crazy spec? M5, the story, I'll tell you guys the story in a minute. I am, I have had my hands on a lot of special cars, but I don't think anything's felt like getting my hands on my dream E34 M5, arguably one of my biggest dream cars of all time. I would play Forza as a kid and I would be going after the Daytona Violet M5s. It, this color with the two-tone, the silver bottoms, it's the vision I've had my whole car life of the E34 I wanted, and I finally got it. I had to buy it from across the world, but it's here. First off, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to John and his son Cameron for letting John sell the car. Thank you guys for making this easy. Thank you guys for getting me my dream car. This means more than I, don't, any, I think anyone could imagine to me. This is I have never wanted a car this bad. And I've played it off very cool for many years because most of you probably didn't even know I wanted an M5. Of course I wanted an M5. I wanted this M5. So how did this car come to be? I was perusing Facebook one day and I saw a post from John of his M5 and his 535E34 together. And it was just a, it was in the E34 group, an enthusiast group. And I looked at it and I go, oof, I want that M5 so bad. Fast forward, I think it was literally like a couple weeks later, and I see John post on the E34 group a for sale ad for this M5. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, my dream M5, a Daytona Violet car, which you guys were wondering, never actually really came to America. I think I heard legit Daytona cars, only two ever came to America, and they were 3.6 cars because the 3.8 never came to the US. I was like, God, it had the Nürburgring package as well, which we'll get into later. But I, I was like, I need that. And when he listed it, it was in New Zealand dollars, the price, and New Zealand dollars price to American dollars, it's almost like one American dollar is like two New Zealand dollars. So the exchange rate works greatly in our favor. The price it was listed for was out of my range at the time. I was like, ah, that sucks. And then I, I, was, I kept going back, looking at it, and I'm like, wait a minute. 
you're in New Zealand. I was like, is that New Zealand dollars? And he says, yes. And I go, ooh, we might have to work something out. I didn't think it was possible to bring in a car from New Zealand. Luckily, because of my German car imports from Germany, I've worked with some companies and I actually have connections to ship cars. And only because of that was I able to reach out to them and say, hey, can we get a car from New Zealand? And they said, no problem. John hooked me up with a company that exported out of New Zealand. My local company here did all the importing. The depot that the car had to get dropped off at was like a few minutes from John's house. So he kindly drove it there, dropped it off, sent me pictures of everything, videos of everything, and we closed the deal. I knew this was the one. It is in great shape. This car was originally owned by a man named Murray Goss, who happens to be New Zealand's first ever emu um, like farmer, which emus are the big flightless birds. And he bought it new in Great Britain. He bought one for him, one for his wife. I'll flash the picture of him with the two cars. The most baller picture I've ever seen. I also have a picture of this car brand new in the service drive I will share with you guys. So that alone was the coolest thing ever. His original plate said Kalaya, which I was asking John, happens to be the New Zealand native term for emus. So I think to, to honor Murray, who passed away sadly in 2020, I'm gonna get a Kalaya vanity plate to be full circle. Uh, I had to come in here and do a voiceover because I had this part of the video wrong. So Murray owned this car from brand new all the way up until he passed away in 2020. And then his family sold the car and John bought it. So John owned it, I think, around a year or so. And then uh, I took over ownership. So, I mean, hardly even a three-owner car. This was owned by the original owner for many, many years, which is super rare and really cool. It has been stringently cared for. That might not be the wrong word, but taken great care of. New Zealand has really strict, like, uh, uh, fitness on the road, like kind of like a European, um, what's the word, it's slipping me. Basically inspections, whatever. New Zealand's very strict, so here is the warrant of fitness from the New Zealand motor vehicles. So basically twice a year you have to get your car inspected and they will fail you for any minor thing. So I have a stack of records of all the maintenance performed on this car and it's all original paint, all original, no resprays, no aftermarket stuff, none of that. It's higher mileage, this car actually, believe it or not, has 180,000 miles, but when it's cared for right, the mileage doesn't matter, I always say that. I knew I needed this car, so. Two months of transport, this car has gone around the world. New Zealand is not close to the United States. She went through the Panama Canal, had to go from one ship to another. It was absolutely crazy. I've been sitting here for two months, biting my fingernails. Well, last week, she finally showed up, and it has been a dream ever since. Walk around the exterior, as I said, Daytona Violet with the two-tone silver bottoms. We have headlight washers, Euro headlights, of course. This car is in just fantastic shape. It wears some, some patina from age, some rock chips, some scratches, a few dents, but New Zealand is very nice on cars. Absolutely zero rust. The doors are completely rust-free. And as you guys know in the E34 world, that's a big deal. Throwing star wheels. It's got the M spoiler, the rear with the heck blend, and the M bumper. I've never had an M5. I've never had a car with these bumpers. The whole package is just insane. And then to top it off, you got right-hand drive, anthracite interior. Just look at how beautiful. We'll come on the inside in a second here. And the S38 B38 what I believe is BMW's first coil on plug engine. If you guys notice, the B36s have the cap rotor and the spark plug wires. These have similar to like an M50 where it's direct coil on plug. So it's Motronic, I think like, I can't remember, but it's, it's a pretty, like it's the modern, most modern old BMW engine you could get. The biggest six cylinder they ever made, 3.8 liters. This engine makes what I believe I've read different numbers. I've read 335, I've read 342, right around there. It's just under 350 horsepower compared to the stock B36, which makes 315. So a decent power bump. We have a five-speed manual transmission. Only the 95 Euro 3.8 cars came with the six-speed. So this is still a G280 original transmission. No problems at all. 
This car retains, as I said, all, everything's original on it. Our engine cover here is a little worn. I actually have a freshly refinished B38 cover I bought locally from a guy, and right after I bought the car, I was like, ooh, perfect. But I don't know, I may leave this on. It kind of looks good. Otherwise, very similar to a B36 car. I mean, you have the same plenum, the same kind of everything. Very similar, but just a better engine. Um, I'm still learning about B38s. Obviously, never came to America, but we'll go for a drive and we'll, we'll feel the power of this thing. There's a closer look at the M anthracite interior. M5 has the rear headrests, which honestly went over my head until I really like started looking. I was like, oh yeah, that's different. But you can see the interior is in immaculate shape. Our driver's seat just has a little bit of wear on the driver bolster where you're getting in and out, which is understandable, but otherwise very clean. Door cards have the design too. One of the coolest designs of all time. I mean, who does not love the M Anthracite? Basically M Rain and the 30 M3, but this is the M5 version. Since this is considered a later car in Europe, being a 93, because I think the M5s were like 90 to, to 95, the Hurricane interior has the, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically like a suede. I guess the earlier cars had uh, black side bolsters with the cloth inlets. So this is cloth and anthracite, or cloth and um, Alcantara, which is, feels really cool, and I think it just looks really cool. This car also comes equipped with a rear sunshade, which I've never seen in the E34. It has a aftermarket added on Hella third brake light. I'm guessing that's a New Zealand code. Uh, being, I think, a Euro car, delivered to like Great Britain originally, probably didn't need that. New Zealand needs that. Here in the trunk, I noticed that the M5s actually have like a premium like trunk interior. I don't know if it's a Euro thing or an M5 thing, but like the 525s, it's kind of a different fabric. This has like a nice trim leather like outline. We have the tool kit here. Let's check out what's in the tool kit. Warning triangle, and then otherwise, I think it's full. It looks to be, oh, we're missing a couple of wrenches. No biggie, I have those, but the warning triangle's cool. Also in the, the trunk here, M5 Euro has a storage compartment with some parts. Uh, we have a, a storage net, really cool. We have a spare throwing star, I mean, without the throwing star cover, but a, you know, a Style 21 storage cubby over here with some old school Daytona touch-up paint. So that's really cool. The interior of this car, being right-hand drive first off is just the weirdest thing ever. But you get in, and if you've never been around a right-hand drive E34, everything is the same, keys on the same side, turn signals on the same side, pedals are the same. Um, yes, it's legal to drive in America. A lot of people think it's illegal. All this is laid out the same, but it's just on the left side of you. So it's, it's actually kind of weird. This is obviously a unique right-hand drive panel because of the way it's angled to the driver. However, this shifter on the US cars, it's skinnier here, wider here, and it's the same on this. So technically the shifter is a little bit further from you, um, which you can really feel in, in first and reverse. They're really awkward, but getting used to shifting with my left hand has been absolutely crazy. Um, I'm filming this part of the video like a week after, but when we throw in the first drive clip, it's gonna be literally my first drive, so I'm a little more used to it now but I wasn't. Anyway, this is all kind of the same. This fabric's stretching a little bit on the M5 shift surround, no biggie. John is awesome. It even threw in BMW of Christchurch mints. Still sealed, so we have some New Zealand mints right here, which is awesome. And then also, New Zealand clusters in miles per hour, so it's not like a kilometer cluster, which is interesting. I didn't know that they used these units, but you can see there, 180,000 miles, you would literally never know looking at this car. And otherwise, nothing very you know unique there. The parking symbol's different on Euro cars. This gives you the P instead of just the brake. And then right here is our EDC control, still functional. This car is on its EDC suspension, which is electronic dampening control suspension, if you weren't aware. You got that in the Nürburgring package cars. So what the Nürburgring package is, is staggered throwing stars. So you have an eight in the front and a nine in the rear. You have thicker rear sway bar, I think a 19 millimeter. Um, front, I can't remember, but from what I recall, you get the thickest sway bars you could basically spec on an M5. 
EDC suspension, basically like the top tier spec M5 package right there, all the fun stuff. Now, if you guys are wondering the rarity of this car, I was doing a lot of research, digging, and from what I could find, this car is one of 43 ever made in this configuration, meaning right-hand drive Daytona Violet with a 3.8. What I don't know is the interior color. Um, it didn't say, but 43 in this package, and then if you're factoring interiors, I think it come with a black uh, Hurricane or a, like a silver Hurricane. Um, it maybe could have just come with black Napa leather. So this could be a very, very rare car. This could be one of 20, it could be one of 25. Who knows? I would bargain to say this is the only one in this figure configuration in the United States, which is just super cool to me. I mean, I, you guys know I like my rare E34s. I have, you know, the blue on blue 525, which is a rare car. The Calypso, which is, I mean, not that rare, but it's rare. But then to just top it off to come over here and have a 1 of 43 M5, it's like, whoa, you know? I mean, that's just so unique, so cool to think about how many still live, exist, and right-hand drive in the U.S., probably not many. I've seen a few, but they're always just 525s. I've never seen an M5. Um, there was only, from what I can tell, or from what I recall, two Daytona M5s that ever actually were made for the U.S., and they were both 3.6 cars, so you really won't see Daytona Violet in the States. I've seen a couple repainted ones going around, but as far as a genuine Daytona, yeah, I mean, this is a, a pretty crazy car. If you're wondering, you know, what things are different on a right-hand drive car, obviously the interior is different, obviously the steering, the pedals, the steering box, the headers, and all that stuff, but a, a, a kind of a weird thing is the wipers. If you look at my 525s or any US car or left-hand drive car, the wipers, there's the one middle one and then the driver's side one is mounted on the driver's side and they go this way. Well, on this car, you have it mounted on, and again, the driver's side, which is actually the passenger side, and then the middle one, which is, I believe, the same, but they lay in opposite directions. They lay this way instead of on a US car, they lay that way. So they actually lay reversed, which means that the whole like wiper assembly is different, which is crazy. I, I don't know why they did it like that. I'm sure that the way it you know cleans the windshield for the driver, but just a really kind of a, a weird thing that I noticed. Otherwise, you know, exterior stuff is all the same. You know, I, engine, the booster is still on the same side, which is really crazy because that means that there must be a linkage from the brake pedal here all the way over to the booster that's right there. So that's pretty unique. If we're wondering kind of what my plans are with this car, Honestly, the plans are to just enjoy it as is and cherish it and hopefully keep it forever. This is not a car I want to sell. I know a lot of stuff comes and goes. I don't ever want to sell this car. Like I said a million times in this video, Dream M5. I don't really want to modify it. I think that this is just the pinnacle as it is. Um, you know, suspension and wheels, obviously not like anything stancy or too low like my other E34s, but uh, if the suspension goes out or um, I have to get rid of the EDC. Suspension is probably an option, and then maybe you know wheels playing with them here and there. I'll definitely keep these, but I don't know. Honestly, I love it how it looks. The M bumpers, the stance. I think it's perfect. I just want to drive it. So, stuff like this has given me a newbound appreciation for stock cars. Um, I just want to cherish this thing. So um, I I just could not be happier with the car. Again, I just want to say thank you so much, John. Thank you, Cameron, for letting your dad sell this car. I know you guys loved this car. I know it was hard to see, yeah, I know it was hard for John to see it go, but he knew it was going to a good home. I guess Cameron had been watching some of my videos, so he put in a good word for me, and he allowed me to bring it home. So I think we'll go for a drive now. Uh, we'll fast forward, or we'll rewind back to the day I got it, and our very first time driving right-hand drive. That should be kind of a fun little driving video. All right, very first drive. This thing literally just got here. I had to bring the camera for this. I'm not doing my initial driving videos, but we needed to experience this together because this is so wacky. This feels insane. Let's, let's see if we can. No problem. <laughs> it's just running, dude. Come on now. That's 
That is such a E34 thing to happen. Crank sensor just went bad. Let's just try it one more time. Hmm. So what did I do different? I put oil in it and I put the back seat back. Huh. Huh. That's weird. Ah, I just want to drive it. Come on. Black headliner. Sagging. Nice. I didn't realize M5s came with black headliner. All right, let's get back to the, the issue at stake here. Let's go under the hood. Let's see. Just leave that door how it is. I don't want you to break my striker. So, on this episode of I've Never Worked on a S38 B38. Is there a crank sensor? Is there a... What I do? I put oil in it. So this car made it all the way here, all the way into the transport yard. No one ever had a problem, and it just, it just developed a problem. What are the odds? Could it have been something with the battery? I don't think so. Like, maybe it's that hard drive. It could be that hard drive. Oh, maybe it's the, maybe it's mm. the button. Maybe not. Man, I got excited. Okay, let's try this again. So, immediately, head went to the worst place, but I think it was a result of a loose battery terminal. The positive and the negative were uh, both loose because they disconnected the battery when they were shipping the car because it was a very long journey. So, steering is insanely light on this thing. This is literally our first, I mean, I have not, the car got dropped off, went into the driveway with it. I have not driven it. I haven't really touched it. So we're all doing that. That is the weirdest feeling ever. Reverse being so far away from you feels insane. Super light steering. Oh my God. See, I can't even, I, I feel so uneasy right now. Notice anything <laughs> weird about... What we're doing right now? No. What? Where I'm talking to you from? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's badass. This is literally my, I mean, very first drive. That's why made we're filming. Voyage. That's oh. made in voyage. I feel so uneasy right now. <laughs> I have no idea what it's I'm weird. doing. I've, it, so it, I've right never right done it. This is, this feels ridiculous. I was in a parking lot, so it's a lot easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best. Good luck. Thank you. That's a cool car, man. Thank you. So. I'm, you think you just locked it? I'm so, I'm scared to go into second gear. Why? I don't even, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to money shift it. Straight down. The silly said, he said, dude, drive it. Drive it, you know, a few times. He said, you're going to, you're going to feel weird going back to the left side. If, that's recording, right? Yeah. God, this feels so crazy. Nothing on the check control. That's insane because every 34 I've ever had has something on like a check control. Fuel is always on the left, right? Mm, I don't know. I think no, it is. The temp's on the right, yeah. I think, yeah, the cluster's laid out the same, but it's just everything I'm doing feels really weird. Actually, I feel kind of... It's not so bad. Yeah, I, I feel kind of comfortable. It's the shifting that's bothering me. If this was automatic, I think I would be pretty, like... Pretty good, but I'm also driving slow and drives nice, smooth. Yeah, it does drive nice. So I, did, I didn't even pay attention. It's got the EDC here, which I, I don't think the car still has. Sport button illuminated though, which EDC, if you're not familiar, is electric dampening control. So it's like the old M5 electronic dampening, which is pretty crazy that they had that in the 90s. I gotta do more research on that before I spew stuff I'm not sure about. This is literally just our first drive. Headliner's a bit saggy, but otherwise, uh, it's fine. God, I feel so... I feel so weird. 
I actually feel kind of kind of cool though. I feel comfortable. It feels normal to me. I'm just worried I'm gonna forget what gear. Feels like fourth. No. Nah, it might be fourth. See, so yeah, I meant to, I meant to go into second. I have. I'm not very. Some people are ambidextrous. I'm like a really righty. Like I can't. Like I don't really know how to use my left hand for anything. So I, I'm gonna struggle. I feel like a little more than the average person. Like I, see, I'm about to go into. Want to hit the drive-through? Get a frosty? No, I don't. <laughs> Backwards. Backwards. Yeah. Right. Right off the bat. So the oil's getting up to temp. Cooling stuff to temp. Oh, it runs smooth. This is, uh, I think this is reverse. I think uh, left hand drive, the lighter would be on that side. This piece is identical to a, well, it's actually, so that's weird. This is in Celsius, but this is in miles per hour. I'm pretty sure New Zealand. Or wait, this is a Great Britain delivered car that went to New Zealand right after. Is Great Britain miles? No. No? Yeah. Then I have no idea how to explain that. Because that temp, the whole, everything on the clusters, like US, this is Celsius. My check control, the bulb is dead. I don't know if we have AC. I guess I could try it. Oh no. Hold on. turn signal is the same so this is all the same you're just shifted so like this nothing's different here it's it's really it's honestly like the pedals are the same I almost didn't know that I, I didn't I don't know what right-hand drive wacky stuff goes on but it's really it's just the shifting because right now like I'm clutching and shifting with the same side of my body which might sound like that doesn't matter but for some reason that feels really weird to me enjoying this this is a very special like feeling to drive and I was telling him E34 and 5 is like one of my dream cars I've, I've, I've been very patient and very like I've been able to tell myself I don't need one for a long time and probably my most asked question is why don't I or why have I never had an M5 and really the honest answer was I never thought I wanted one because my turbo car, you know, makes the more power and these are expensive and I, I don't know, but the, 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 the deeper answer was my dream M5 was a Daytona Violet car. Engine wasn't really a thing, interior spec wasn't really a thing, right hand, left hand wasn't a thing, it was simply the color. Daytona Violet was my dream color, I, was, I would play Forza, I think Motorsport, Motorsport 4 when I was young. And I would always have Daytona Violet M5s. Two-tone Daytona Violet was always a dream. This one just happens to have the best engine, the I would say arguably the best interior, the Hurricane, or Anthracite, which would be the more, I think, correct way to call it is it's Anthracite. Um, and then right hand or left hand was just kind of a, a, a weird extra. It just happened to be where the car was, the price of the car. It kind of just came into my, it didn't really fall into my lap, but I mean, I reached out to the guy and, and said, oh, I, I, I want to do a poll. We're up to temp now. So now I want to feel what an E34 M5 feels like. I've never ever driven an M5. Just as the first one I'm driving is a right hand drive 3.8 car. I have driven the 3.6 S38, um, the E9, but the dynamic there is completely different than what this is so I, it's you can't even really relate the two so I'm excited to feel how what the power is like from a 3.8 a 3.8 car is I believe 340 ish horsepower which is pretty impressive stock is 310 from a 3.6 so you get a decent horsepower bump but will we will it be noticeable it's one of the things what is that it's a legendary <laughs> color because the 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 reason, also another thing why I never cared to own one is because okay, it's the it's the, the quickest E34. Well, I happen to own 
a heavily modified, really fast E34. So I, I feel like that the, I don't think I'm gonna be like blown away, right? It's obviously a way different dynamic, but it's not like I'm gonna be like, well, I've never felt an E34 this fast, because I have, so faster. Now putting this head to head with the SD2 car will be kind of fun, because this is technically 100 horsepower more. So this should actually be a very fun car because the S52 car is a lot of fun. And this makes 100 horsepower more, which is pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, give or take after the mods of the S52, maybe 80, 90 horsepower, but I also forgot we got no plates still. As a very quick initial impression, very smooth, very goofy being right hand drive. But yeah, a, as I kind of suspected, it's not like it's not like throwing me back in my seat or anything. I also haven't redlined it yet. And I'm still learning. The last thing I want to do is drive beyond my means not knowing how to drive this car. first gear. <laughs> Luckily I, I caught that. This channel would be gone. I would you would never see me again. I'd be done with cars. No, it feels good. I, I haven't really there's traffic so I can't really ring it out in third. I'm, I'm sure third gear feels just as impressive. For some reason I feel like I don't know how to check my mirrors. So I'm I'm really Left lane changes are absolutely terrifying me right now. But it feels good. It feels great. I am, this is a really weird, crazy feeling. To have an E34 M5, this is a, a dream of many, many years for me. We'll have a more official first kind of drive. This is more of just like, I, you had to, it has to be a live, together, right hand drive reaction because if I drove this even once and then filmed, it wouldn't feel the same. Um, so yeah, this is like literally completely impromptu, first time together. Let's see if I can... Oh, this feels... Oh, this feels weird. This feels very weird. It's gonna, it's probably gonna take a little bit before I'm able to uh, confidently corner and kind of drive spiritedly. I, I'm a little uneasy behind the wheel right now. So, but it feels good, temp's all good, it runs, dr drives great. I'm, this is, I am so excited about this. This is the coolest thing ever. car oversteered I would not be able to control it I have no sense of like feeling like of control uh, oh this feels good Manning it? yeah this thing feels real good this is a pretty a pretty quick car actually let's see can I do a downshift oh, oh, oh. Uh, third? okay yeah third It's such an M car from all the M cars I've driven. Like, if you're not revving it out, driving it hard, it's a super tame, 
experience, but when you get up in the revs, like about 4K, this S38 just opens up, which I think is when the, like the plenum system starts to, uh, it, it activates, I think, like the actuator flap at the higher RPMs, and that's when you get your more power, I guess. I almost freaking hit the pickup truck. I didn't even, I did not even think about my spacing right there. So, initial thoughts. Bro, crazy, really cool. That is, I gotta drive this a lot more. The parking, the parking brake has a signal, a symbol instead of just saying parking brake. I've never even, that's that's a Euro thing. Yeah, this thing is sweet. We will definitely take this on more drives. But that was our initial Josh right hand drive experience. Feels crazy, literally, I need practice. But I actually felt pretty confident once I started driving it for like, you know, after a few minutes, so yeah, back back to the regular scheduled program. This was just a, a quick. So there you have it. That is my new E34 M5. I am so 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 stoked. Thank you again, Cameron. Thank you again, John, for allowing this car to come to me. I am so thrilled. Hope you guys enjoyed our introductory episode to my new M5. There will be plenty of content to come with this car. I cannot wait to make more content with it. I am just so happy. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.